for our module four, uh, our focus will be on the different measures of central tendency and non-central position and uh, variability. Okay, so uh, here, um, the me different measures of central tendency will include mean, median, and the mode. And for the different measures of non-central position, will include quartile, percentile, and uh, decile. And the different measures of variation will include range, variance, and standard deviation. Uh, then the different applications will cover coefficient uh, of variation, and uh, we also have what we call the empirical rule. So we'll go over them one by one. Uh, in this uh, recording, uh, I will focus on the different measures of central tendency on uh, what we refer to as the mean, median, and the mode. Okay, so here is a... Um, a chart of uh, the different topics that uh, we will cover for this uh, module, right? And um, now, let us first um, focus our attention to the three different measures of central tendency. So we have the uh, mean, or what we refer to as the average, okay? And that is uh, given by um, the X bar, okay? And uh, also, uh, we have this Greek letter mu, all right, before I go into detail, the different uh, measures of uh, central tendency. Now, if uh, the data is taken from the population, okay, the numerical characteristics that we use to describe those um, numerical values uh, will be referred to as parameter. So in this case, a parameter that we use for the population mean, that's because the data values are taken from the population, will be denoted by uh, the Greek letter mu. And that is given by the summation. So this uh, symbol or this notation will indicate that we are taking the sum okay, of all x sub i's or all data values taken from the population wherein i ranges from 1 up to n. So the notation that we see here uh, below and above the summation notation uh, would be referred to as the index of summation. So um, in this expression, uh, what we mean here is that we're getting the sum of all x sub i's. Okay? And then once we have the sum of all data values in the population, we divide it by uh, the population size, which is denoted by the capital letter N. Now, what about if the data is taken from the sample? If the data is taken from the sample, then we make use of what we refer to as uh, our statistic. Okay? So here, the statistic that we use is uh, x bar for our sample mean. And uh, the concept is the same. However, uh, we differ with the notation that we use. And in this case, we make use of the summation of all x sub i's, wherein i ranges from 1 up to the small letter n, which will indicate our sample size. Once we have added all data values pertaining to the sample data, we divide it by the sample size, which is uh, denoted by the small letter n. Okay? Now, we will go into detail with um, how to determine and the further analyzing uh, the concept of um, um, a mean or the average. Now, the second measure of central tendency is what we refer to as the median. So when we say the median, it is the value which is found at the center or uh, at the middle of the distribution. Then the third measure is what we call the mode, which is um, indicated by having to refer to the data value which has the highest frequency or uh, appeared the most in the distribution. Okay. <clears throat> Now, let us uh, focus first on uh, what we refer to as the mean or the arithmetic mean. And um, in this case, as what we have denoted, uh, we will use this symbol X bar for our sample mean and the Greek letter mu for our population mean. Well, again, um, if the data is taken from the population, the notation that we use would be what we refer to as uh, the parameter. Okay, wherein we make use of the Greek letters. However, if the data is taken from the sample, the numerical characteristics uh, will be denoted by um, English um, letters or English alphabet, um, which is what we refer to as statistics. So in this case, for the sample mean, we will make use of X bar. So with this notation as what we have indicated earlier, it's the summation of all X sub i's divided by N. And in this case, we have expanded uh, that notation here, uh, wherein i ranges from 1 up to N. Okay, then we divide the sum by our sample size. The concept is the same for the population mean. We expanded this expression from x1 up until xn. So summing that up, we divide it by our population size will give us our population uh, mean. Okay, now um, let's analyze further. Okay, what um, the um, mean or the arithmetic mean as a uh, measure of central tendency. 
So this is the most common measure of central tendency or central location, and it is actually affected by outliers or what we refer to as extreme values. So let us refer to this um, example or to this data set. So with this data set, we have 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. So our mean here uh, is that we add 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 and plus 9 will give us 25. And we divide it by the total number of data values that we have in the distribution or in this set, which is 5. And therefore, we get a mean which is equal to 5. Okay, now, um, let us shift our attention to the second data set. So here in this data set, we have 1, 3, 5, 7, and then we have a value which is way over here, which is um, very far okay, from most data values that are clustered in this part of our data set or in our distribution. So this value here is what we refer to an, uh, as an outlier. Okay, so um, by this statement that the mean is affected by outliers or extreme values, let us find out uh, how is that so. So in this case, we have 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 and plus 14 will give, up, will give us a sum of 30 and we divide it by uh, 5 will give us a mean of 6. So the mean was distorted or was affected by this extreme value of 14. Okay, the same is true when we have extreme values which is far from the left or values that are very small. So there's a, a tendency that it's going to um, affect also the mean of uh, that specific data set or distribution. Okay, now let's consider the following example. Okay, so here in this example, uh, during a particular summer month, uh, the eight uh, salespeople in an appliance store sold the following uh, number of central air conditioning units. Uh, we're in, in the first... Um, salesperson uh, he was able to sell eight units the second one was able to sell eight units also 5 14 8 11 16 and 11. now it is indicated that this month will be referred to as our statistical population of interest so that means to say we're going to make use of this notation mu to indicate that the data values are taken from the population so how do we uh, compute for the mean number of units sold okay so um let me present uh, the following um, um, a short video clip to illustrate how uh, to determine uh, the mean for this given statistical population of interest. Example, uh, during a particular summer month, the eight salespeople in an appliance store sold the following number of air conditioning uh, units and we are asked to consider this month as our statistical population of interest and we are asked to compute for the mean number of units sold. So since this is considered a statistical population of interest, uh, the parameter that we're going to make use is mu to indicate that we are looking for the population mean. And that is given by the summation of all x sub i's divided by our uh, population size, which is equal to a big letter n. So in our example, uh, we, need, we will get the sum of all air conditioning uh, units sold in a particular month. And summing it up will give us uh, 81. And the number of air conditioning units that we have, uh, that we're considering for a particular summer month is 8. For our population size is 8. So uh, dividing this will give us a 10.125. So that means to say the total, um, or in this case, the mean number of um, uh, air conditioning units sold in a particular summer month is given by 10.125. Five. Okay, um, so in this case, if we have specified that we're going to express your final answer uh, to two decimal places, so you will need to round this off, and this will be equivalent to 10.13. Uh, so the mean number of um, air conditioning units sold for a uh, particular summer month is equal to 10.125 or rounded off to 10.13. Okay, now um, um, what we refer to as our weighted mean. Okay, so the weighted mean is also called the weighted average. It is an arithmetic mean in which each value is weighted according to its importance in the overall group. And the formulas for the population and the sample weighted means would be identical. But we only differ in this case would be the notation. But take note that we make use of the subscript no W to indicate that the mean that we are computing is a weighted mean. So here we make use of mu sub W or X bar sub W to indicate the weighted mean of the population 
and the weighted mean of the sample. So in this case, we are getting the summation of the product of the weight with each data values, and we divide that by the sum of the weights. So in this case, each value in the group, which is denoted by x, is multiplied by the appropriate weight factor, which is w. And the products are then summed and divided by the sum of uh, the weights. Okay, let's consider the following example <clears throat> for us to illustrate the concept of the weighted mean. So here, say in, uh, this is in the field of business. All right. So here, um, in a multi-product company, the profit margins for the company's four product lines during the past fiscal year where line A, B, C, and D, okay, with the following profit margin, which is denoted by X, okay? So here, we are asked, oh, with the corresponding sales in uh, pesos, so we are asked to find the weighted mean of the profit margin or the weighted mean profit margin. So that's why the profit margin will be denoted by X, which is in terms of a percent. So um, by our formula, what we need to do is we multiply the weight with uh, the uh, value of x. So in this case, uh, we multiply each of those weight with the corresponding profit margin, and we get the following products, sum that up, and divide it by the sum of the weights. Okay, and um, uh, what we will have here is that we have 303,300,000 uh, divided by 58 uh, million. And that will give us a uh, weighted mean profit margin of 5.23%. So you can uh, verify um, the values that we have in this uh, example. Okay? Right, so let's continue. Now, we'll proceed with um, the second measure of central tendency, which is what we refer to as, uh, as the median. So the median is a robust measure of central tendency. And in this case, it is not affected by extreme values. How is that so? How is media not affected by extreme values? So let us consider the following uh, two data sets. So in this data set, okay, we have 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. So locating the value at the middle would be this value, which is 5. Okay, 5 here is uh, the value found at the center of the distribution. Therefore, the median will be indicated or denoted by 5. All right? Now, what about um, in this case, wherein we have an extreme value? Okay, so what we've pointed out earlier, we made use of the same data sets. In computing for the mean, the mean was affected by extreme values. How about that? Uh, what about median? Okay, so as what we've indicated, it is not affected by extreme values, and that's illustrated in this data set. So we have 1, 3, 5, 7, and 14. Since we're looking for the value at the mesh, uh, at the middle, or at the center of the distribution, in this case, that value is equal to 5. Okay, so may it be that we have a value which is uh, very high, it will not affect um, the value at the middle of the distribution. Okay, so therefore the median is not affected by extreme values. Okay, there are actually two cases uh, we're in, uh, we're going to consider to uh, determine the median of the given distribution. It will actually depend on the number of data values we have in our data set or in our distribution. So if you have an n, uh, or a sample size or a population size, which is an odd number, the median is simply the middle number. Okay, so in this case, in our example, we have an odd numbered data set or distribution. That's because we have one, two, three, four, five data values. So what you have to do is simply identify the value which is found at the center of the distribution. Now, what about in the case that the number of data values we have in our distribution is even? So when n is even, the median is the average of the two middle integers or the two middle numbers, right? Now, let me illustrate how um, the two cases um, would be uh, used to determine the median of a given uh, data set or in a given distribution, okay? So this um, a short video will um, explain how to determine the median for odd-numbered uh, distribution. How do we compute for uh, the median? So for uh, our median, we will make use of the following annotations. So say, for example, we're talking of the population median. Uh, we will make use of um, the mu tilde. Okay, so the way the um, line that we see uh, above is uh, what we refer to as tilde. And same is true if uh, we're looking for the median coming from a sample, the notation that we will use is x uh, tilde. Okay? And since we're talking of a median, it's, uh, we are referring to the value at the middle of the distribution. 
So in this case, we will locate the value which is at the middle and that is given by our formula. Okay, if you notice, we will make use of uh, this formula uh, for the population median and that is given by x sub n plus 1 uh, over 2. Okay, so we may use of a uh, big letter n to indicate that we're looking at the population size. And for the uh, sample, uh, we will make use of the notation x sub uh, small letter n plus 1 over 2. All right. So, um, however, there are two cases. So, if we are looking at um, the odd-numbered um, distribution of the data value, so say, for example, I have uh, 3, and 9, 6, 11, and 9. Okay. So, that means to say our n here is equal to 5. So, our n, or our I, I take this as our sample, so our sample size is equal to 5. Okay, first things first, uh, before you uh, compute or determine the value at the middle of the distribution, we are going to um, arrange our data values from least to highest. Okay, so you refer uh, to uh, this um, arrangement that we have here. So we have 3, 9, 6, 11, and 9. Arranging from least to highest or in ascending order, we come up with 3, uh, 6, 9, uh, 9, and 11. Okay. Now, so we're going to locate the value found at the middle of the distribution. So using our formula, that will be with n i is equal to 5. So we'll have x sub 5 plus 1 over 2. So that means to say this one is uh, 6 over 2, and that will give us x sub 3. So meaning, we are looking at uh, our distribution, okay, we're in. We're going to consider the, the value which is found uh, third in our distribution. And in that case... Uh, we will have 1, 2, uh, 3, 4, and 5. So the third value in our distribution is given to be equal to 9. So that means to say our median for this odd number distribution is equal to 9. So uh, this is how we come up with a median if um, our uh, distribution is odd numbered. Okay. Now, what about in the case that our distribution is even numbered? So, let us refer to the next video clip. So what about for an even numbered uh, distribution? All right. Uh, we are still going to make use of the formula um, x tilde or mu tilde, which is given by x sub n plus 1 over 2. So, let us consider the following uh, distribution for an even number distribution. So, say I have 3, uh, I have 3, uh, 9, 6, 11, uh, 5, and 5. So our n is equal to 6. Okay, let me just make a, a correction. Um, I, I believe I referred to this as 5, but please take note that uh, this is uh, 11. Okay, so I made um, a mistake earlier. So this is uh, 11 um, as part of the data values, uh, uh, the data uh, value um, of uh, this uh, given uh, data set. Okay, let's continue. Okay, so using our formula, uh, we will have x tilde, and that is given by x sub 6 plus 1 over 2, and that is 7 over 2, which will give us 3.5. Uh, so, meaning to say, we are going to determine or to locate the value, which is 3.5 in our, or located at 3.5 in our distribution. All right? However, before we do anything else, um, we are going to arrange our distribution or our data values from least to highest. So um, in this case, with this distribution, arranging it in ascending order. So I now have 3, 5, 6, 9, 11, and 11. So in this case, I have to locate the value, which is at 3.5. So if I'm, I would refer to this distribution, I have 1, 2, 3. So this is my third value. This will be my fourth value. So 3.5 is somewhere in the middle. Okay. However, in that case, um, I will make use of uh, the following uh, scheme wherein the 3.5 is located between the third and the fourth value. So meaning to say, I will get the third value in the distribution. I'm going to get the fourth value in the distribution, add the two of them, and divide it by, by two. That will ensure that the 3.5 is between the third and the fourth value in the given distribution. So in this case, what we will have is... Uh, the third value in our distribution is 6, and the fourth value in our distribution is 9. So I will have 6 uh, plus 9 uh, divided by 2. That will give me 15 divided by 2, and that will be equal to uh, 7.5. So that means to say our median is equal to uh, 7.5. 
So the value at the middle of the distribution is uh, 7 uh, point, uh, five. Okay, so in this case, our median is a 7.5, and that is found halfway um, between the third and the fourth um, data values in this given distribution. Okay, now let us proceed to the third measure of central tendency, which is what we refer to as the mode. So the mode is a measure of central tendency, and the value, uh, it is the value that occurs most often in the distribution. And uh, also, the mode is not affected by extreme values. And um, the mode is used for either numerical or categorical data. So if you can recall in um, how we summarize or present um, categorical or qualitative data, okay, so what we uh, do is we consider the frequency of each uh, the, uh, categories in the given uh, distribution. So basically what you are looking for there uh, would be the mode. Okay, so we, uh, you may be interested with the category that appeared the most in the distribution. Uh, at the same time, a uh, mode is used for numerical data. Okay, so again, it is the value that occurs most often in the given uh, distribution. Okay, now here let us um, consider uh, the following uh, data set that we have. So in the first data set, we have one, one, we have one, three, we have two fives. There are two of them. There is one, seven, there are three nines, one, ten, two twelves, one thirteen, and one fourteen. Okay, so with this distribution, we see that um, the data value that appeared the most or has the highest frequency is 9. So therefore, the mode of this distribution is 9. Okay, however, it's also important to take note that there may be some distributions without a uh, mode. Okay, so in this data set, for example, 0 appeared once, 1 appeared once, 2 also appeared once, 3 appeared once, 4 appeared once, same is true with 5 and 6 appearing once in the distribution. So they all have the same frequency, so therefore this distribution has no mode. Okay. However, there's also the case wherein uh, there may be some distributions wherein there are several modes. So if your distribution indicates that uh, there are two modes, or there's only one mode like in this case, okay, so this distribution is referred to as unimodal. But if you have two modes, okay, or two data values, or two categories um, that uh, have the same frequency, then we say that we have two modes. In that case, we have what we call a bimodal distribution. But if we have three or more modes in a given distribution, then now uh, we have what we call a multimodal distribution or a polymodal distribution. Okay? Now, um, going back to the different shapes of the distribution that I have uh, shown or I have discussed with you in uh, the previous module, okay, we are now ready to make use of uh, the different uh, definitions for uh, the different shapes of the distribution relating the uh, values for the mean, median, and the mode. Last time, we only considered the shape of um, the histogram or even the stem and leaf distribution to indicate uh, or to come up with an approximation of the shape of the distribution. However, now, uh, since we know how to compete for the mean, uh, to compete for the median, and to determine the mode, uh, we are going to do comparisons of these three measures, and from there, we determine the shape of the distribution. Okay? So for symmetric distributions, okay, with the, the following uh, graph or curve, the mean, the median, and the mode are all found at the center of the distribution. Okay, so in that case, the mean is equal to the mode is equal to the median. So the moment that is the case, then we have a, a symmetric uh, distribution. Okay, what about if it's not symmetric? So we need to say we have a skewed distribution. So in this uh, case, we have what we call a right skewed distribution, or it is positively skewed. The mean is said to be greater than the median. So here we expect uh, that the mean is found at the right of the median, and the mode is located to where the peak or the highest part or the highest point of the graph is. Okay, so that is for a positively skewed distribution. For a negatively skewed distribution or skewed to the left, okay, the mean is said to be less than the median. So the median is at the middle of the distribution. The mean now is found at the left of the median and the mode is located to where the highest peak or point in the graph is. Okay, so I hope that that is clear. So let us come up with the following uh, summary of the different relationship between the mean and the median. So for symmetrical distribution, the mean is equal to the median, is also equal to the mode, right? However, for a positively skewed distribution, the mean is greater than the median, 
And for a negatively skewed distribution, the mean is less than the median. So we take note that these two relationships or the latter two relationships are always true regardless of whether or not the distribution is unimodal. Okay, so may it be that you have more than one mode um, being positively skewed, the mean will always be greater than the median. And being negatively skewed, the mean will always be less than the median. Okay, so I hope um, the concept of the different measures of central tendency uh, would be clear to you. And you will now be ready to proceed to the different uh, learning tasks uh, that we have for this uh, particular uh, module.